<laughs> you hit the fuck. Hey, man. Did you hit oh, the Come on, man. Did you hit camera two? I sure did, I. Come on, bro. What? Man, camera two is, is, is a new addition to the family. Come on, man. Boom. Man, why don't y'all clean up, man? That's Nobody cleaned up. You clean man. up. Clean this god dog dog, man. Clean this radio station up, man. That's what we got you for. Hey, man. Ten four, bro. Ten four. Ten four to the side, pick first deals. Ten four, ten four. The microphone is the microphone. Why y'all talking fool? Why y'all talking fool? Ten four, ten four to the side, pick first deals. Why y'all talking fool? Ten four, ten four to the. I knew it, man. I knew this was going to be one of them shows, man. I knew it, man. When I came in, when I woke up this morning, I said, oh, man. This going to be one of them shows, man. This thing all crackling, bro. Let me get some new headphones, man. What's going to be headphones? You stop man, yelling. When is Christmas coming, man? You just stop yelling. Man, I don't know. Why the microphone ain't on, bro? Man, you don't lost your mind. You hear that bro, I don't hit it. Thank you. Man, this thing crackling like some bacon in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> when you go... <laughs> ah! This is gonna be one of them shows, baby. Blood and love. <laughs> this, hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey. Let me see, man. Hey. I got something for you, man. Let me... Man. Turn that thing up, man. Why you, why you being so stingy with it, man? Yeah. Why you being so stingy with it? Why you being so stingy with it, man? You don't know nothing about being stingy. Why you being so stingy with it, bro? The folk want to hear, man. They want to hear what's going on, man. Big money. Big money. You know what I'm saying, man? Look, man. Hey, hey, hey. Look, look. What you got? When I come in here, man, make sure you clean up. If not. Ain't nobody cleaning up, no. You're going to pick it up or you leave. Throw this stuff out the way, man. Well, you gonna pick that look, up, man. And these pins, look. These are pins. No pin on that floor. These are pins. No. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, your mic. Hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Good evening, good evening. Hey, man. Good evening, good evening. Hey, man. We buy. Hey, hey. Something happened to your mic. Your mic chop, died. Chop, your chop, mic chop, died. chop, bro. Your mic died. Hey, bro. Chill hey, out. Chop, chop. Your chill mic out, died. Chill out, man. Chill out. Your mic died. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is your host, Rocky Thompson, coming to you live from Lil Burn. We're going to jump right in, man. From, it's from Lil Burn, man. Lil Burn, Lil Burn, uh, right outside of Atlanta, man. Just keep it right there. We're we right outside of Atlanta, right down by... Oh, man, don't say it, man. Don't say it, bro. Don't say it, man. Because if you say that, man, people get... Man, don't say it. They get itchy. They get itchy. Boy, they'll come down off of that Brock. I got it, boy. But anyway, man, this hey, this is what we do. This is for, uh, hey, man, we got a great, man, we got a great, man, the, the audience is battling, bro, already. Man, I'm, I'm, anyway, this show, we got a lot of people maybe joining for the first time. So for anybody who's joining for the first time, this show is about personal finance. And when I do each and every week, 117 weeks, God, dang, 117 weeks, and the show is about personal finance from a spiritual perspective. We don't do religion on the Daily Bread show. We don't do, let me just say it two more times just so people can get it. We don't do religion on the Daily Bread show. The show is about personal finance, but we, we do it from a spiritual perspective. We only believe in one thing, and that's God. So you can, you can use whatever name you want to use, Jehovah, the Redeemer, I mean, Buddha, Buddha what else you want to, I mean, Allah, Allah, the great I am. I mean, that's I like I am. Uh -oh. oh man, wait a minute, man. 904. That's what I'm talking about. Good evening, this is Rock King Thompson with the David Brand Radio Show. What's your name and where you calling from? They hung up. They hung up. Oh, they hung up, man. Man, you, you gotta learn how to work that machine, man. man that's some that is some feedback yeah. I've been getting, man. Yeah, people been people been telling me, man, it's yeah. 10 to 15 people calling in every week. Yeah, what it is? And they said, man, every time they call in, man, they can't get through. They told you that? They told me, man. Yeah, they told me that I can't get through. Look, I don't care who tells you. Look, man, look. So what we do, what we, look, man, look, man. I don't know if I'm about to call a union, but, man, you <laughs> you got to put them pork chops up, man. <laughs> you beat them, man. You want to you wanna show, man? Nope. Do you want to show? No, sir. No, man, sir. I, I be taking that this. <laughs> I be checking out your show, man. 
Hey, uh, let me ask y'all something. If a uh, if a bacon sandwich, if a bacon sandwich have lettuce on it, is it still a bacon sandwich? Are y'all calling into the radio show and let me know it? Mm -hmm. I be like, man, that's a good man, say something good, man. Don't steal it. I'm, I'm I know y'all be on that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on in the morning, man. But uh, it's, great it's week. Huh? Is Grits groceries? Hey man, I, this is a gospel show, man. I'm gonna stop Go ahead. So I'm gonna slip out, man. But this is a spiritually based show, so we're not gonna talk about that, man. We got excited. I mean, it's just uh, 117 episodes. That speaks for itself, man. Just not said. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the news. Glad, super glad, man. That um, a lot of you know. First of all, definitely praying for the people of the Bahamas. Because uh, that was just, man, from what I've seen and the footage and, you know, listening to the people, man, that is just, that's devastating, mm -hmm. right? That's devastating to have everything snatched from you. And um, the, the sad part is, it's really, I mean, the storm is the sad part, but the, the, the part that's even worse is the stuff that you have to do after the storm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, can you imagine, like, Yesterday, you come home, everything normal, or you're getting ready for the storm, and then you come back the next day and, like, mm -hmm. everything gone. Devastation. Everything. No clothes, mm -hmm. no no refrigerator, no nothing. Just you, the spouse, mm -hmm. the kids, I mean, the pet. It's like no dog food, no cat food. no. So your whole world is just, oh, man, so I'm, I'm definitely... You know, keeping them in our thoughts and prayers, man, because um, they're gonna need they're gonna need that resilience. They're gonna need that reliance on God, and they're gonna need just the perseverance. You know, and you know um, the stuff that we take for granted every day, they no longer. Oh, see, man, you can't be man, you can't be read my listen, man. Oh, you are you are going. Bro, ahead. this is an Emmy award winning show, man. You can't just be. You, mm. I mean, you just can't. You can't just jump in and take my stuff like. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm stepping back there, brother. I'm stepping back. Go ahead. Man, how you just. I said, Emmy, this is an Emmy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Emmy. Go ahead. I didn't say. Well, I said Emmy Award yeah, winning. Yeah, Emmy. Emmy Award winning show, you man. And you just. I said, what? Emmy. No, I said Emmy, bro. I ain't from. I'm not from no. Where you from? Nah, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not from there, man. I know how to. Dude. Listen, man. I know how to enunciate. Okay. Ooh. One of big words. Right? I know how to enunciate mm. when I need to. There you go. There you so go. don't get outside of yourself. Thinking, thinking that you don't. Right? There you go. Thinking that I don't, man. Okay. I have an extremely high mm -hmm. vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm not full of it today, man, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man, it's just um, so that was that was one I wanted to. Um, oh man, I wanted to, you know, keep them in our thoughts mm -hmm. and our prayers, man, and um, and not let that be cliche, but but seriously, man, when we when we close our eyes at night or when we wake up in the morning, man, just if nothing else, give them a thought and mm -hmm. just think about the people down in the Bahamas. Absolutely. Second thing, man, super. When you talk about being grateful. Super grateful for the state of Florida dodging the bullet, man. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of rain. It's that another man. I was so happy when that, and I was hoping that that tracker stayed true because one thing about Mother Nature, you can always, you know, bob and weave. And I was hoping, I was like, man, I hope it don't make landfall in Florida, man, because um, a lot of people that forgot about it, but that was just two years ago. I mean, we was dealing with, I guess that was what, Irma? I, I get all the names mixed up, but the one that tore the keys up. So we just really getting back on our feet, man. So, you know, I was I was really hoping that it, it didn't make landfall in Florida. So I'm, I'm really appreciative that it went down like that, man. And um, I mean, I'm just grateful from that standpoint, yes. grateful. And, and, and since you brought it up, and that was one of the topics that I had, just, it's a good segue in, in just to being grateful, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and I'll speak on that because one thing about me, man, I'm, I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, be hypocritical. We talk about a lot of stuff on the Daily Bread Show. But one of the things that I always like to have is, a, is an attitude of gratitude. And, not, and again, not being cliche, but just thinking like when something devastating happens to you, even financially, because that's what the show's about. So <laughs> this week, <laughs> this week, <laughs> 
I had something devastatingly financial to happen to me, right? So when it initially happened, I was like, oh, God, oh, you know how you get, you know, rolling around on the ground and acting crazy. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I'm saying? When something devastating financially hits you, man, it's like, uh, you know how you be leaning over the kitchen? You, everybody's done this. Like you leaning over something in the kitchen and for that split second, because you rushing, you forget you up under the cabinet and oh, you lift up quick and it's just like, and you hit that point of the cabinet, mm. just boom, like, oh. oh. So for a minute, man, I was like that. I was like, that was, I was like, oh, this is a, oh. A man, I've been trying to do right, man. And I'm, I'm talking to the man upstairs, and he's, man, he's looking up. I'm like, oh. Mm. But it's just a test. So we don't, you know, we don't never want to be tested, but we're going to be tested. Exactly. But in, in, in rather short order, right, it was, man, probably, and I probably was 15 minutes late. I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. Bet. Right? I'm not tripping about that because, and I'm going to talk about this tonight. That's going to lead us into today's topic. Because gratitude, gratitude to me is, you know, just to keep things in perspective, right? Gratitude is like, if you, if you lost it, like you have a hand, but if you lost a finger, that would be devastating, right? Mm -hmm. If you lost, like, something happened, had an accident, you know, the saw, whatever. Or maybe you just lost a fingertip. Even to just get your, the tip of your finger cut off, mm -hmm. initially it would be traumatizing. Yes. Right? Like, oh, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But you didn't, lose, you didn't lose your hand. Yeah. Right? Or you didn't lose your arm. Or you didn't, you know, you didn't lose, you know, the feeling in your upper body. You didn't have a spinal fist. I mean, it could, people use that as, it could always be worse. Yeah, it could be. But if you had that type of mindset to say, you know what? I'm good. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's the whole thing, man. Don't, you know, in a financial world, and if you play this game the way it's supposed to be played, and if you play this game often, you're going to have a financial issue yes. sometimes. I don't care how good you mm -hmm. play the game. Mm -hmm. even, even, even the big boys, right? Yeah. Even the big boys, people you look up, oh, he's a millionaire, oh, he's a billionaire, mm -hmm. oh, he's, okay. But guess what? They dealing with stuff too, right? It's top to bottom. So the whole thing is, is you got to build up that resiliency, financial resiliency. Come on. So that way when something comes on your path, it's like, bam, you hit your head, but, and you you know how you hit your head and that water coming out, you're like, God, oh, you crying? Crying. Oh, you saying you're crying? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I was about to say, man, look, man. <laughs> man, you gotta. <laughs> I'm not, man, look, man. I'm trying to do a good show. <laughs> I'm trying to do a good show, man. I'm not. I'm not trying to, man, look, man. I'm not trying to, man. I hush, man. Because I looked over there, man. I'm about to say, man, see you. Hey, man. <laughs> I got a big head, but, man, you <laughs> you, you hit your head. Say the house will leave. Your head big, your head a little bigger than my head. <laughs> so when you hit your head, you it might not. <laughs> It may not even. It may not even person? hurt you. I'm saying the average person head. So you the average person, man, it would hurt you. But so I mean, you so you bro, if I had a head like you, it probably. Would. So you were crying though. I went, bro. I said, man, it made me tear up, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, when you hit your head, what happened when you hit your head? The house <laughs> I know, man. You got a fun. Look right, at, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Uh, come on, let me go get the last helmet. This the last helmet. We, we'll see. We can. Oh, I, I got but, you. Uh, oh, yeah, I got you. But, uh, I mean, it's just, um, <laughs> but you got to be, um, you got to build up some financial resilience. And, you know, being grammatically correct, some people may say financial resiliency, mm -hmm. right? But on the daily bread, each and every week, 117 weeks. I was thinking about that. I mean, every week I think about that number, the next number. But the thing about this week, and what, what that's bringing me into is the gratitude is bringing me into right in line with what we've been talking about the last three weeks. 
Two weeks ago, we talked about credit. I gave you all the five components of credit. Now, what undergirds credit, the five components of credit, is your financial well-being from a, we talked about return on investment last week, right? We talked about having an effective budget last week, right? And then we talked about currency. That's when it really got hot, when we talked about positive and negative, mm -hmm. having a surplus, having a deficit, all of that undergirds credit. So you need, it's, it's, it's like a melting pot. It's like a, it's like a dish, right? So if you got good credit, credit strong, but you got a deficit, ah, got a problem. And again, keeping it transparent, the thing about when you teach topics, whatever you teach, some people teach how to weld. Some people teach you, you know, how to work out. Some people teach you, whenever you get the opportunity to be the teacher, you will always learn the most. Whenever you get the opportunity to be the teacher, right? You might be the trainer. I got a brother-in-law, he trained people how to drive the city bus. But being the trainer or being the teacher, guess who learned the most? You do. So I'm saying that to say when I got off the show last week, I said, you know what? Even when you, the trainer, the teacher, the head of the class, sometimes the stuff that you're teaching, you know how to do it, but it might have been a while since you've done it, right? And for me, just, again, being transparent, I said, you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going I'm to redo. I already had one. I said, I'm going to re-go in and redo my budget, my interactive budget, and see if I have a surplus or a deficit. When I first did it, did some numbers. The crazy, thing, <laughs> the crazy thing is when you start doing these budgets, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you fact, right? Like the young people, I'm telling you facts, right? You sit down and start doing the budget. Guess what you'll start to do? Because you would do anything to make that deficit go away. You would teach yourself. Hmm? Yeah, you you'll start writing stuff down and be like, yeah, I think I, I think I only paid like three fifty for that bill. No, it's 450 or it's 458. So I'm saying that to say, as I went through that process this week, I went and did a new one. The good thing is, what you want? Good news. <laughs> <laughs> you want the good news? <laughs> I got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> Which one you want first? You want bad news? Well, okay, bad news. Yeah. Bad news is, the bad news is it wasn't a deficit. Mm. So I say the bad news, the bad because I was thinking, I was like, man, I want to. I hope I don't have no deficit. So I didn't have a deficit, but I guess the bad news to me was I had a surplus, but it wasn't a lot of surplus, mm -hmm. right? But that's fine, right? That's fine because here's the thing: if you do your budget correctly, right? You really should be able to live off of 70% of what you make. Mm -hmm. I said 7 0, mm -hmm. 70%, not 100% of what you make, or which, not even what you make, what you bring home, your net. Mm -hmm. 70%. And why is that? So you, I'm going to give you all, I'm going to put you all up on something. Come on. Right? You get paid a dollar. Mm -hmm. What should you be doing first? What's the first thing that you should do when you get paid a dollar? What's the very first thing you should do? What's the very first thing? Put something back. No, I'm, I'm here to give it to you. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. You said do what? Put What's the back. first thing you do? Take something and put something back. Pay yourself first. Yep. yep. Put something back. Right? So we gonna, I'm going to put this up here, man. I ain't going to be lazy. I'm going to stand up. This is the first thing. So first, pay yourself. Like this boy, man. Mm -hmm. Right? Pay yourself first. I put the first up first. I don't know why this thing all turned like that, man. Why you ain't got it? And you got to fix that camera, bro. Because that tape is going to come out crazy. It ain't going to come out crazy. But that's the first thing. So that's 10%. So let me put this over here. I'm going to put it over here so you all can see what I mean by. So you start off with 100%, right? Because you got a dollar. You get paid a dollar. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is you pay yourself 10%. Why is that important? That's important because whenever you do any job, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a wage to or a W-2 wage earner, 
You should always pay yourself first. Now, that don't always happen because most people, mm -hmm. right? And I've been on both sides. I've been an entrepreneur. I've been a full-time entrepreneur where it was like, whatever we, whatever we kill, we eat on this side. Mm -hmm. So I've been a full-time entrepreneur before, so I'm not telling you theory. I'm telling you some facts. And I've been a W-2 wage earner. I've been on both sides, and I've been in roles on both sides where I didn't pay myself first. What I did was I paid my bills, or tried to pay my bills, did that first, and then whatever was left after I paid my bills, whatever I had left, then I tried to save out of that, and most times there's nothing left after that. So you don't, you don't do it that way. You got to pay yourself first. So that's that's ten percent. Now, after you pay yourself first, what's the, and these are laws. So let let me let me back up. This is like gravity, right? So gravity is a law. Um, some people don't believe it. The law of attraction, that's a law. These are these are actual laws. So you have to do these things in order for you to in order for you to reap the results of the law. So this is a law. Pay yourself first. Why? Because over time, if you pay yourself 10% of your income over time, just say a 10 year span, in 10 years you would have saved, right? You would have saved 100% of your salary, whatever it is. So if you make $30,000 in 10 years, you will have $30,000. If you make 20, you will have 20,000. If you make 100, you have 100,000. If you make a million, you have a million dollars. But here's the thing though, most people don't do that. Most people don't operate that way. That's why we get into a financial trouble because we don't follow the law. This, this is the law, right? And you don't want to break the law. Mm -hmm. So the second thing that you do, so what's the next thing that you do? So you, you paid yourself first. What's next? The next 10% goes where? Where's it go? Church. Come on, man. Come on, man. Say it, bro. Church. Don't, hey, man, don't. Church. Listen, man. Church? 10%, bro. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. You tithing. Right? You tithing. Now, some people, and this is a spiritual show, so I, this is just my belief. So you ain't got to believe me, right? You ain't got to call into the show, 678-381-1973. You ain't got to call into the show and be upset like, I ain't got a tithe. It don't mean nothing if I don't tithe. It don't, you, you ain't got to do that, right? But the thing about it is this. Why you moving all the way back there, man? So when, when you stand up, your head ain't cut Head, boy. Man, we put your head on this. <laughs> oh, you want to go with the head joke, man. Listen, man. You want to go back there? Nah, man. You want to go back there? Nah, man. You don't cry. Uh, trust me. You do not want to do no head joke. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Cryer. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> you gonna make me come over and do a craniotomy on you? Hey, <laughs> I'm not gonna do no jokes, man. Let me we doing a serious topic, man. But tithing, so people feel some type of way about tithing. I'm telling you, I'm I'm being honest with you, right? Because they think, and again, this is mindset. They think it like this has to do with the church, and this has to do with the minister. Minister is the minister. Got, you you walking into church like <laughs> this, look, man. This happened to me recently. You walking up to the church and your pastor's coming by and he's got their brand new twenty. What's this nineteen? And his brand new charcoal black charcoal mm. made box. With, mm. the, with the screens, not the tinted windows, with the screens up, and he go passing by you. What? What? <laughs> you walking up to the church, and your minister come passing by. No, he don't come. He come whispering by, <laughs> whispering by in his Maybach, 2019 Maybach, with his screens in there, and that triggers something in your mind, and you feel some type of way, like you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm not giving him no more money. I'm. Shoot, I mean, I'm not doing that. Wrong, bro. And sis, wrong. Wrong way, don't even. See, the thing is, when your mind, when you get your mind right, when you get your mind right, that won't even phase you. 
because whoever's in your pulpit, whoever you aspire, you know, like, hey, that's my spiritual leader. He does this, that, and other. What, what he does, and this is one thing that I know for sure, I don't care who the minister of your church, who's the head of your congregation or your archdiocese or whatever, right? The person that is the provider is God. Your minister don't provide for you. That's God. When you need a healing, that's God. When you need protection, that's God. Right? When you get that promotion at your job, that ain't your minister. That's God. So we got to change our mindset and be like, you know what? And the way, the, the way that it worked for me, and I used to be, again, this is a perfect show. I used to be like, I used to be like, man, I'm not, shoot, 10%. Be, and I mean, I had to put in a hundred dollars in church. I'm like, oh no, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna put these twenty dollars, <laughs> and these twenty dollars is big. I'm gonna... But when I start to learn the law, and I start to understand, and God would speak to me, I was like, you know what? This this is really how it goes. God said to me, and to me, this is my personal testimony. So I can't speak for you, but this is basically what He told me. He said, look, if I gave you a thousand dollars. He said, if I give you a thousand dollars, you can't you can't give me a hundred. If I give you a thousand, you can't give me a hundred. And I was like, or if I gave you fifty thousand, you can't give me five thousand dollars? I gave you fifty. Then when I start thinking about it like that, I was like, wow. And I gave you children. I gave your children help. I gave your I gave your wife help. I gave you grace and mercy. I was like, ooh. I said, you know what? So now it's not about tithing, but it's about being obedient. So when I started doing that, I was like, whoa. Put me into a whole nother mindset, a whole nother way of dealing with money, right? So then I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, right? So that was the second thing. And then the third thing, which is more specific, this one, this one should go here. So we're going to put this in a different color since we're going to talk about this for the remainder of the show. We're going to go here. 10% should go to savings. And you might be out there saying, oh, but you paid yourself first. So why you got to save too? Paying yourself first and saving, that's two different things. That's two, that's two different, that's two different things. Paying yourself first, because everything that you pay yourself, it ain't gonna end up in a, in a savings bucket. And if it does, great. That's even better. But data, I'm a huge data analyst, and the data that I'm analyzing, trust me, trust me, very few people are even doing 10% into savings, let alone 20. So trust me when I say you ain't gotta worry about this, right? But if you follow this, the remaining balance that you would have to pay bills and do whatever else you need to do is 70%, right? Because we did 10%, pay yourself first, 10% with the tithing, and then 10% with the savings. Now, the beauty of this formula is this. When you do it on a budget sheet, you get to see how much you save over the year. And when you do the budget the right way, you get to see how much you've spent over a year. Now, a lot of people come to me and say, man, you know, I need some help. I'm about to tell them how much I charge because I do financial coaching. That's one of the one of the companies that I have, one of the, you know, um, businesses that I run. I do financial coaching, right? I, co I help, I coach people. Like, Billy Tech, he a coach. I'm a coach. I'm a financial coach. So when I'm talking to people something, and I tell them how much I charge, sometimes they like, man, they can't wrap their head around that. But here's the thing. The thing that you have to take into consideration is this. When you, when you learn how to do this consistently, and when I show you how to look at your budget over a year, there's some things that will jump out at you in your budget that right now today, you're not really feeling it, you're not really thinking about it, because you don't think about it that way. 
And one of the things that always jumps out at me and I always use this example is cable. 125, right? Most people pay 125, 150. Some people pay 225 a month for cable. TV, Star, Showtime, HBO. Did you see the barbershop? Did you see such and such? He was on Ghost did this. Atlanta Housewives did that, right? So we just go, I'm going to give you a conservative number, $125, right? $125 over a year is, is how much? I'm going to show I'm going to write this on the board so that way you can you can get with this. That's 1500. So it's 125 a month, right? So we say 125 a month. And then in a year, it's 1500 a year. Mm -hmm. And then I just told you about when you save something for 10 years. So guess what? When you pay pay for cable for 10 years, guess what that number turns into? Got to put our dollar sign on there. It's fifteen thousand dollars. Now, I said that's fifteen thousand dollars. Now y'all ain't making enough noise like I thought y'all would make, but this is something to think about. I'm fifty-two, so I've had cable. I've had cable since what twenty-five. 26, somewhere up in there, 25, 26. So I've had cable or some type of service that I was paying for for the last 25 years, right? Now, I said $15,000 every 10 years. So 15, 15, that's 30, half of that. So we're talking about, about what, $38,000 in TV? You know, give or take. Now, the reason that's important is this. When you look at your budget, just to kind of go back to last week, when you look at your budget and you have a deficit, these are the type of things that you want to, these are the type of things that you want to think about and figure out what's important to you. 125 a month to watch TV, or I can eliminate the 125 a month and use that money and do something else. And you might be saying, well, what would I? It's something else. You you do realize you can go to, I, I would say Radio Shack, but I ain't seen Radio Shack. Yeah, you where you go? Where you go? Sears, uh, Amazon. I know you can go to Amazon. If you look up TV antenna on Amazon, you can go on Amazon and buy you a TV antenna connected to your TV, whatever type of TV you got, smart TV, non-smart, whatever, and you can get something to watch. May not be what you want to watch, but you can get something that just kills some time where you just kind of. What I call vegging out, got off from work, just like, oh man, I'm just, I just want to sit down and watch some TV for a little while. May not be stars, may not be HBO, may not be, you know, the barbershop. It may not be all of that, the shop, and but it just be something for you to veg out. But that $125 a month could be going to something else, especially if you're not paying yourself first, mm -hmm. tithing, or saving. If you're not doing, if you're not doing these three. Especially if you're not doing one of these three, then it's time to cut the cable. Mm -hmm. Just start there. And there's some other things that you could cut, but we don't like cutting back on things because we feel like we're we losing out on something. I said $15,000 in 10 years. Wow. Now, I ain't even going to do the one. I used, I would do the one with the cell phone, but that's even that would hurt you even That would be more hurt. Mm -hmm. And I know we're not giving up the cell phone. We, you know, now it's become like... Well, it is. It's, yeah, it's like... You can't leave it. You turn around from work. You'll be late to work and get written up. <laughs> if you realize you left your phone at home, you would turn around and go back and get it. And get and get written up at work. And you don't even need the phone at work. Now I can see if you need it for something that you do, but whole nother story. But let's talk about savings. Because we talked about having a financial issue, like something coming to you that you weren't expecting, right? But here's the thing about savings. Savings, the importance of savings is you want to be putting, you want to start to put things away when you don't need them. And most times the way that most people's minds work, they want to start to save when they need the money. Like when you really need something, now it's like, oh, I want to put something aside. No, you need to put that aside before you need it. 
And you need to keep putting it away consistently when you don't need it and not touch it. Just let it grow a little bit. Just like plant the seed, letting it grow a little bit. You can't pull it up. Like the, seed, the little plant just start growing. Now you pulling it up, it's going to turn into a fruit tree. But not if you pull it up. If you pull it up and start using it before you, you let it get the roots in the ground, then you're not going it's, it's, it's going to be traumatic, yeah. financially traumatic, because when something comes onto your radar and you really need some money, and you had some money in savings, but then you turned around and took a trip with the money for the savings, and now here's somebody come slap you with this big bill. Pop! Like, God, no! Savings. It wouldn't be so bad, right? If you could take a little couple of branches off your tree, like, I wasn't planning for this. But, but it's better for you to take off a few branches and take care of what you need to take care of as opposed to not having a tree at all, right? And letting that little bit of money turn into a catastrophe. The average person has less than one, one $1,500 financial issue in a year. Less, I said less than one. Most people have less than one $1,500 issue. An issue that's gonna cost you unique that you weren't thinking about, I need $1,500. Now, if you don't have fifteen hundred dollars, what are you going? What do, what do you typically do? You are gonna charge it? Ooh, okay. Now you're charging it. So when you start to charge it, what is that gonna do? That's gonna increase your utilization. When you increase your utilization, what is that gonna do? That's gonna bring your credit score down. So see, all of these things are tied together. But my charge on this show is is for you to start learning how. These things are not independent of each other, but they're all interconnected. When you start to think like that, as opposed to having $1,500, like, man, I didn't have this for that, but if this is gonna make that go away, bam, there you go. And I'm not even talking about extreme cases like incarceration or, but you can have an issue where it's not about being incarcerated, but you may need to pay a lawyer. You may have something came up, you might have been, you know, driving without your seatbelt on, or you might have had, you know, a little too much fun at the, at the, you know, at the tailgate, jumped in the car and started driving, and they pulled you over, and then all of a sudden, you're like, man, I was not, you ain't get a DUI, but you might have got a reckless driving ticket or something, right? And you, now you got to appear in court, and they saying, hey, I wouldn't advise you coming to court without an attorney, mm -hmm. even though it's not a big case, you're not going to go do no time, but if you don't, if you come without an attorney, you may end up on probation. You may end up with something on your record. So now you're like, damn. How much is the attorney? The attorney is $2,500. How much the court, the court costs? $500. How much is it to get my car out of impound? That's $400. So you can see, boom, 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 boom right? So now you at what? $3,200 or $3,000, right? 25 plus four is 29 plus another three, 32, just like 3,200. If you don't have 32, if you don't have access to $3,200, or if you like, well, I just put it on my credit card, okay. But now you, you're using that. So you gotta do what you gotta do. I get it, because I've done that. So I'm not, don't get me wrong from that. But you would be in a better position if you had it tucked away somewhere that you's like, you mad because you got to use it for that, but you're happy that you had it. You're happy that you had it. And that's what the moral of the story is. That's what happened to me earlier this week. Somebody, you know, they hit me with something. I was not, I did not, I had this money for that. I wanted to do that, mm -hmm. right? I've been saving and saving and saving. But again, this goes back to tithing, right? This goes back to that. Because God was like, I'm going to give you some mercy. It's going to be a hard lesson, but you thinking in your plan that this is for that. But guess what God did? God said, you know what? I'm going to make a provision for you where you start actively saving, but you thinking it's for that, but he's preparing you for this because he, he knows what you're going to need it for. So I sure was going, I was, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I think I came, I was like, oh, shoot. But after I sat down and thought about it, I was like, you know what? 
If this don't make it go away, boom, 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 there you go. Keep it moving. Keep it moving, and I'll get it back. Or I'll make it up. Or I'll do something. I, I, I'm still hurting by it. <laughs> don't, get, don't get that boy. I'm, hey, I'm crying now. You like me when I cry. I am crying. I get tear up. I think I probably get tear up on this one. I ain't hit my head either. But I see all this life. Didn't have to. Oh, man. It ain't nothing like, well, coming to grips with that. It ain't nothing coming to grips with. You did what? <laughs> Man, it's, oh, I'm tearing up now, man. I'm tearing up now, but uh, yeah. So I, I mean, that's the that's that's why I do this show because my goal is this: if I could get a million people to understand what I'm saying in this episode, 117 episodes, it's millions of people struggling right now with the top three. Yeah. I mean, millions of them. I don't pay myself first. I don't make enough. Okay. You don't make enough. Okay. I don't tithe. I ain't got to get them. All right, cool. I ain't got no, I don't have no savings. All right, all right. But then when you want or you need something, mm -hmm. not when you want, because when, because like Les Brown said, we buy what we want. Yeah. We buy, we, we, if we want something, we buy it. Mm -hmm. We buy what we want, but we beg, we beg. We beg for what we need. We we literally beg for what we need. You know, hope I get approved for this. I don't know how to Lord, Don't be him and hard there. Go in there, like I said, man. Go in there with some confidence. Here's my credit report. Here's my financial statement. Here's my personal financial statement. Here's everything I got. Here's my down payment. Here's some more. Here's some more. I got some other statements over here. Here we go. Let's ride. That's, that sounds a lot better than ha uh, ha uh, and ha uh, ha. Uh, what? Like, no, nah, man. We so my. I, I mean, my thing is, is like, I want us to get to a point where we taking this thing serious, like civil rights. Because really, right now, economically, economically, if you are at the table and you don't, how should I put this? If you at the table. And you don't see yourself at the table, then that means you're the entree. Mm. Okay? If you if you're at the table, but you don't see yourself at the table, that means you're the entree. So when you look at America and you look at all the stuff that all of these different industries that are being driven by the black dollar, by our consumerism, right? Fashion, cars, alcohol. Hair care products, food, mm -hmm. travel, entertainment, everything. You hear everything being targeted to us, but what? Financial statements. When the last time you seen a, a, a commercial, right, aimed at African Americans from Merrill Lynch, mm -hmm. from Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs comes on. Hi, you know, we, we are really looking towards, you know, you investing in our hedge funds, they don't even talk to us about hedge funds. They don't even talk to us about investing in the stock market. They don't even talk to us about none of that. Mm -hmm. They talk to us about food, right? They talk to us about music. They talk to us about travel, partying, having a good time, popping bottles. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Our kids, they taking advantage of our kids. Wow, they got an opioid... I mean, they got an opioid crisis. Do you realize they're taking people to court right now over the opioid crisis? Mm -hmm. Do you realize they're suing, they're suing the manufacturers of opioids? They're suing. I'm talking about this suit is bigger than the tobacco suit. Did you hear anything like that during the crack epidemic? No. They didn't sue. No, they didn't sue. Man, they was infusing that stuff into our community. So I'm saying my whole thing is like, man, it's time for us. We need to just wake up. Like, boom. Like, I'm doing these three. Because if you do these three and still, and you pay your 70 and you don't have net left, you may think you don't have net left, but you got plenty. Because what's going to happen is over time, that money is going to be, it's going to start to, to stack up. Now, it's funny how I have these different topics, and then I, I'll come up with a book of the week, right? 
But let me tell you all something. Everything that I talked about today, this is a classic. This is the book of the week. This, mm -hmm. I mean, I got a library full of books, like a room just full of books. I mean, hundreds and, I mean, hundreds and hundreds. This, man, this is in the top three. You know, let me see, Bible, Law of Success. Yeah, this, yeah, they top three, top four. And the reason, the reason, and this one is the richest man in Babylon. The richest man in Babylon. The reason this book is in there is because this book, it tells you not only how to get out of debt, not only does it tell you how to begin saving, not only does it tell you how to change your mindset, but it's simple reading. I mean, something that you could give to a kid and say, hey, read this book, and a kid could read this and be like, I get it. Like, I get it. I mean, it's, it's so simple when he's saying, look, if you have, you know, if you have 10 eggs, he said, listen, look, and I just turned right to, he said, then R.K. turned to a humble man who had declared himself an egg merchant. If thou select one of thy baskets and put it into it each morning, 10 eggs, and take out from it each evening, nine eggs, what will eventually happen? It will become in time overflowing. Who don't understand that? That's in that ba that's pretty basic, right? Basic, yeah. He said, put in ten eggs in the morning, mm -hmm. right? And in the evening, take out nine. What's gonna happen over time? That's that's ten percent. That's the same thing's gonna happen with your all your accounts, all your money. You put in ten, right? Take out nine, that's ten percent. Over time, it's gonna overflow. A lot of people say, oh, man, I would, I would have more money if I was rich. He talks about that in here. He has a room full of people and said, okay, it's a room full of people. Everybody in here has a different profession. But let me ask you a question. All of you all make different money. Some make a million. Some make 100000 Some make 50000 Some make thirty. So everybody's salaries are all over the place. He said, okay, I get that. He said, but let me ask you a question. Why all of you all, regardless of how much you make, Still broke. Mm. That's in here. And that's something that we have to, because a lot of times we think, if we make more money, if I just had more money, I, I'll be straight. I'll have, no. Because that's, called some, that's something that's called Parkinsonian law. And what's Parkinsonian law? Parkinsonian law says this. You will let your expenses expand to the capacity of your income. Yep. Boom. You only get that on the Daily Bread Show, right? Parkinsonian Law. So the, the book of the week. If you don't have this book, it's uh it's nine, it says $9.99. You could probably get it on Amazon for about four or five dollars. Best four or five dollars you will ever, ever spend on a book. And this book, if you read it cover to cover and start to put into play the things that's in this book, it will change your life. It will literally he talks about things like this. When you owe a person money or you owe a business money, right? And you get to a point in your life where you say, you know what? I know I had, you know, maybe went into collections. Maybe I, I meant to give it back to you and I lost my job. I couldn't give it. He said the first step in mending a relationship is what? Pay that person back. Man, do you know how much that'll change something? If you, I mean... Because I just told one of my, I mean, one of my clients recently, I was like, he was talking to me about something. I said, man, whatever you do, don't borrow that money from your family. Don't borrow that money from your family. Because it's good on the front end because somebody's just trying to help you out of a bad situation. But when you get to a point where you can't repay that money, that will turn any relationship sour. And you don't want, you don't want that in your family. So I was like, no, nah, you need to. You have to figure out another way to do that, mm -hmm. right? That's one of my pet peeves. Don't borrow from family and no cosign. Because if you cosign, mm. that's in the Bible. If you cosign, you're really asking for trouble. So, I mean, you know, take some time out and do some investing in yourself. And that's something else I want you all to sit down and really think about. Like, when you do, when you do your budget for the year or you sit down and you know, 
you can look at last week's episode. I, I take you through step by step how to create an effective budget, right? When you go through and you create that budget, one of the things I want you to ask yourself when you look at all of those liabilities, your credit card, you got a car note, you got auto insurance, you got homeowners insurance, you got ballet, you got cheerleading, you got, man, you even got a line item for the dog. The dog got to go to the vet. Mm. When you go all the way down that line, right? You go down vertically and read through all the stuff that you got to pay, student loans and all this other stuff that we have personal loan and, you know, I got this, I got to get the uniform for that. When you go all the way down that line vertically, and then when you start going horizontal and start looking at month over month, how much you paying. Take some time out and ask yourself this question. How much of all of this am I investing? Just get it free on all of it. See, you, see, make sure you listen to it. Don't get it free and don't listen, man. Okay, I'm done. They get them, hey, you can go to Audible. You can go to Audible. My producer just went to Audible. He said he picked the book up. He got it for free. So I don't know if he had a credit. I know I got Audible. Mm -hmm. They give you a free credit, but you can't beat that. You know, this is this is classic. Richest Man in Babylon? Oh, that changed it. That changed everything. This this one little book for me, I was riding on the train. It took me from riding on the train to it worked some things out for me. Just this book. But um when you go down that list vertically and you start going horizontal, looking at stuff that you're paying month in and month out, just take a deep breath. This is what I want you all to do. Take a deep breath. Look at that document and see how much money are you investing in you. Like, do you have a coach? Do you have a financial planner? Do you have a conference? Do you have a seminar? Something that's going to help you improve your financial well-being. If the answer is zero or no, I don't have nothing, you need to invest in yourself too. Because things that you invest in, right, things that you invest in, they create value. And if you want to get better at something, you have to invest in it. You have to invest in it. You, mu you have to invest in it. And it's for you. It's your investment. So again, that's a mindset. Don't think that the person that's teaching you this skill or this person who's showing you how to do this, ah, oh, they get rich, ah, oh, they this. No, nah, you sit down and you do the math and like we talk about return on investment all the time. I, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. If somebody told me, I'm gonna show you how to make an extra thousand dollars a year, right? And it's gonna cost you a thousand dollars. I'm gonna show you how to make a thousand dollars a year, but it's gonna cost you a thousand dollars for the class. I'm in. Like you ain't I ain't, I don't need to look at the whole You ain't lost nothing. I no, because you the thing about it is when you make an investment, you have to be you have to think investing is is a long game. Mm -hmm. Investing is not like popcorn, like pop. Investing is a long game. And the people who play it the best, i.e. Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett been doing this what, sixty years, seventy years? He's like nine, almost 90 years old. He's like 89 or some crazy number, right? He don't buy a company this, this year and then next year sell it. He buy a company and he that company, he gonna keep that company from now on. Because the company's just gonna keep throwing off money. So we got to get into the same mindset. Yeah, it cost me a thousand dollars. But so what? I made a thousand this year, I'm gonna make a thousand next year, I'm gonna make a thousand next year, and it's gonna avoid, it's gonna help me avoid losing a thousand. So it's not just gaining, it's going to help me, like, man, he oh, don't do that, because if you do that, that's going to cost you. They're going to send you a fine. So even in this financial catastrophe that I ran into this week, even though it was a financial, you know what I'm saying, like, oh my goodness, I learned something. I learned some, I, I learned some more key things that I wouldn't have learned had I not happened to deal with it. And that's the other thing that we got to get used to is, just deal with it. Whatever it is, don't put it off. Don't, I don't want to deal with that. Huh? Deal with it. Because once you deal with it, then you're going to learn something. But if you put it off, oh, I'll deal with that later. Oh, I won't open the mail. Oh, deal with it. Because when you deal with it, you will learn something. Mm -hmm. You will learn something that will save you time, effort, energy, money in the future. Right? 
Change our, we got to change our mindset. This, it starts up top. That's, that's one of my next series that I'm doing. It starts up top. I don't care what it is. If you think you the, you know, the whatever, whatever, it start up top. All of it start up top. Your belief, all of it start up top. Whatever you achieve, don't achieve, start up top. Start, once you get below eye level, it ain't nothing. That, what's below your eyes that's going to make it happen for you? Your hands, your heart, what? Your feet. Start up top. You got to get up top right. So once you get up top right, everything below your eyes down, everything below your eyes down is going to do what up top say. So you got to get up top right. So that's what, you know, savings is about. I know we talked about a lot of stuff. If you need to go back and look at this episode, I would strongly encourage you to do that because um, this is a different world. We're doing some different things. And if you're not paying attention, if you're at the table and you don't see yourself, you are the entree. That means people are eat, they're literally waiting on you to make all of these mistakes, right? Pay all this interest. While you paying interest, somebody's accumulating that. They're making money. All of these financial missteps that you make, somebody else is benefiting from that. So at some point, you got to draw a line and like, bruh, that's it. Y'all not getting no more on this. Like 25% and 40% and 32%. Like, nah, I'm saving. I'm tithing. I'm paying myself first. Because once you start doing that, that's his habit. You want to create these habits over time. So if you start to create habits with little money, you'll be able to do it with big money. Because that's a mindset. You start getting big money or bigger money and you already tithing, but your relationship was with God. So now when he bring you a million dollars, you got to be strong enough to, you know, you was tithing with, you know, 50000 but now he didn't hit you. You've been trying to hit it big. Now the show that took off, we on all the networks, we on BET. You think if he gave me a $20, I mean, a $20 million check, you don't think I have a problem with mm -hmm. giving him $2 million? If he gave me $20 million, you think I have a problem giving him $2 million? No. He ain't going to no church. I might give that to the Boys and Girls Club. But the fact is, you got to give it away. That's a law. Give it away. You got a problem with the church? I'm sure it's a shelter or something right down the street from you. Bunch of people in need. That's just God's, that's an extension of God's hand being a blessing through you. Go downtown and around Oh man, go down, man. The homeless, man. The homeless rate in Atlanta is getting, man. It, it's it's starting to look like a like a like like a New York or a DC, LA. I was just at an event yesterday, where the police, one of the police chiefs, and he was like, "Look, the homeless, the homeless condition, the ho the number of homeless people in Atlanta is growing. I mean, exponentially." And the lady asked the question, like, "Why does it start to be so many homeless people?" And the guy was like. Financial times. This is what he said. This is the police chief saying this. It's financial time. People struggling. People losing things. So a lot of people may not be homeless right now, but I know for a fact because I read data. I don't listen to what people are saying. I read data, and the data says, yes, people are struggling. People are struggling. Just do the, do the math. So, I mean, like I said, my charge, come on, give you all some stuff that you can use. Give you all some stuff that you can replay. Give you some stuff that you can share with your kids and your kids' kids. That's And I'm going to end with that. One of my clients this week, I was talking to him. He said, man, I don't want this just for me. He said, I got an 18-year-old son and a 15-year-old daughter. He said, I want, I want you to be able to, he said, I want to be able to teach my kids this. And right now, with what I know, I can't teach them this. So I'm like, is that worth it? I'm like, all day. All day. So make sure y'all go out. Richest man in Babylon, check that out. Make sure you're doing these three things. Pay yourself first. It's real easy. Pay yourself first, right? Tithe, if you got a problem with tithing, give it away, right? Just give it to a charity. Give it to a nonprofit somebody. Give 10% of whatever you make, give that away. And then the, the third 10%, get you some savings. Get you some savings. Because it's not like you need something and you don't have nothing. The dust or lint in your pocket. That's a problem. So check that out, savings. Savings goes right along with those other the things that we've been talking about this month, right? Or over the last four weeks. We talked about credit and the four, the five.
five components of credit. We talked about return on investment. We talked about budgets. Now we're talking about savings. So the only thing left is for us to talk about debt a little. Ow. It is my cheap now. Now you know. Now this dog here, man. You're going to start my show late. Now you go, I'm sorry, now you go, yeah, you start, like, you, you, boy, I ain't gonna, hey, I ain't gonna call y'all today, I ain't gonna call y'all today, man, hey, man, what my, hey, man, hey, come on, that, bro, 